Hello my beautiful co-creators, Lilo here. I'm interviewing tonight Don Miguel Ruiz, the best-selling author of The Four Agreement that was internationally read in so many different languages. It's a blessing to be interviewing this man, a man of the heart, a truly uh, inspiring, a beautiful person. He just uh, wrote and published his latest book is The Fifth Agreement and definitely something to read and I'm going to interview him about his latest book and about all the truth and wisdom that he wants to share uh, with us. So it's a privilege to be interviewing right now Don Miguel Ruiz. <laughs> Hello Don Miguel Ruiz. Hello, Suihar. How are you doing? Very good. Very good. Very good. I'm, it's I feel, a pleasure to be with you. Well, same here. I feel very, very blessed to have you. You're a, an amazing person making such a difference in the world. You're a man of the heart. You're a messenger of love, aren't you? Well, you know, uh, people say many things about me. And uh, many people ask me what I am, but the real truth is that I have no idea what I am. Uh, but I know that I am, I'm here and I am alive. Then in order to describe what I am, I have to use knowledge. And knowledge is not exactly truth, but it's what, the way we understand each other. I can say, well, I am a human, I am male, I am a medical doctor, I am an author, I am a shaman, I am a, a energy, a spirit, light, but all those are just words. The truth is that I really don't know what I am, but I'm here. And it's the same with all of you. You think that you, that you know what you are and you use knowledge to, to tell to yourself what you are and you make an image of yourself and you project yourself in that way and everybody may believe that this is what you are. But I can tell you that perhaps a dog, it doesn't know that it's a dog. A cat, it doesn't know that it's a cat or an elephant. We call it God and they don't even have any idea what we are calling them. And it's not really true that they are what we say they are. But by agreement, we know them that way. And by agreement, that becomes true. But it's a relative truth. It's not really the absolute truth. Mm -hmm. Because the absolute ah. truth doesn't need to be proved. Because that truth exists long before the creation of humanity. And will exist long after the extinction of humanity. But this relative truth is the one that we humans create by the use of the word. And I don't say it's good or bad or right or wrong, but we need to be aware that it's our creation. Because when we was born, we really didn't have any knowledge. And that comes later when our parents hook our attention. They teach us the sounds that after repeat and repeat, we mastered. And when we was kind of ready, uh, and we was kind of ready when finally something spectacular happened in our head, we talked to ourselves in our head and we answered to ourselves with a voice that nobody else hear by us and we call it thinking. That's when we was ready to go to school and start learning all the graphics, which means all the words that we learned from our parents now we was able to put it in graphic and we learn to write. And we learn a whole language that is only true for all the ones who agree with every single letter, every single word, and they understand completely the same language. But let's see that tomorrow you wake up in China or Taiwan or Germany or Italy or any other country. You will hear all those sounds that have no meaning for you. You will see all those graphics that you have no idea what that, what that means. But in order to understand, you need to translate it from what you learn or what they learn. Then whoever grew up in that direction, they will have a different religion, a different philosophy, different way of thinking uh, uh, about themselves. They create a completely different images and they pretend to be what they believe they are. And I don't know if I'm making sense. Yeah, so how do we go, how do we 
go beyond that? How do we go beyond that good and bad? Because you're even saying there is no good and bad. There is actually lies. Well, we create entire language, and the language is not good or bad, bad or, or right or wrong. It's a perfect creation, and it works for the purpose that we created. But we created not because we humans are so intelligent. No. We created because it was the program that we received in the moment of conception. In that program, they say, you will create a language. Like if you read the Bible, you will say Adam walking in the garden of Eden with God. And they say, well, let's call this a tree. And God say, okay, let's call it a tree. It's an agreement. Let's call it a fly. Let's call it and give the whole, the entire language that is only true by agreement. Then uh, we believe in every agreement that we make and we invest the power of our faith in every agreement that we made. And you say faith is believing something a hundred percent without a doubt. And we invest all the power in what we believe. It doesn't matter if it's right or wrong or good or bad. That's what we just believe that by the end of the entire creation of that virtual reality, we invest almost all the power of our faith that our faith becomes so little. And that's, let's see, when, if we remember Jesus the Christ, he say, well, if you have your faith bigger than a grain of mustard, you can move mountains. Hmm. Well, it's not that big because we already invested and we believe in so many lies. And that creation, which is our virtual reality, take power over us. And that's the one who control our, our lives. Then when we have that awareness, we want really to change that. And that's the reason why the four agreements becomes so popular all around the world because it has nothing to do with the language. It has nothing to do with the religion. It comes directly from, from the integrity of the human, from that common sense. Then it doesn't matter in which language you read the four agreements, you know that you knew that. It's just pure common sense. And this is just the introduction for awareness. Mm. And the fifth agreement is the end of that, is the conclusion. Is when you finally uh, are close to being what you really are, but you face the last challenge. It's like Jesus being in the desert or Buddha being the body tree or Moses being in, in, in the desert for 40 days with all the people who follow him. And the end is something that we can call the last judgment. And the last judgment is when you last judge yourself for the very last time. And after that, there is no more judgment. So that's, after what, you, that, that's, what, so that's what you call the dream of the third attention. So, you, so we go from victim to warriors to actually master. So this is, exactly. the, master, this is the mastery piece. Yes, then in the, war, the, the dream of the world is after you start having the awareness and they start doubting all what you learned before. And start, uh, start changing your beliefs in your own way because every single human is completely different and only you know what you need to change. Nobody else knows. And you will change what you don't like it. Then it's a war in your head between uh, what used you, we used to believe was good and evil, but good and evil is just the result of the real conflict, which is the truth and lies. When you believe the lies, the result will be evil in different degrees, depending how attached you are to your own lies. And when you believe in truth, is the result is goodness. Then there's a conflict in the mind until finally the last judgment happens. And that last judgment is when the, the time that you judge yourself for the very last time. And this means the end of the war. And it's the beginning of the brand new dream that I call the dream of the masters. Then when you finally do the, the last judgment, you are already a master. It's Jesus after finishing with the desert, after facing Satan, which is the other side of his own, his own mind, or Buddha facing Mara, that was the, 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 all the demons that he created, to finally become the master. And once they change that, then they focus on the rest of the humans because but then they know that the entire humanity are themselves 
because we are only one living being, men, woman. We are only one living being, and it doesn't matter where we was born. It doesn't matter what religion we believe. It doesn't matter or what moral things we have. We are exactly the same. Then what I'm talking to you right now, or to everybody who is listening to us, I'm really talking to myself because I am you. And I am everybody who is listening to me. And that's enough reason why to love all of you, even if I don't know you guys. But what makes me happy is not that you guys love me. What makes me happy is for me to love all of you. Love coming out of you is what makes this physical body completely happy. Because it's myself coming out. And it's what I put in on my books. I put myself. Then whoever reading those books is really going into Miguel's way of life, Miguel's life, because this is authentic. I'm not pretending to be anything. Because how can I pretend when I don't even know what I am? Mm -hmm. I just know that I am. That's why Popeye, the sailor, mm -hmm. is one of my greatest heroes. I am what I am, and that's all what I am. <laughs> so but that, so that, that creates definitely the freedom to be who we really are beyond those layers, as you say, of inauthenticity. But it took you, you you're from a family of healers from the Toltec tradition, and it took you a life-threatening moment to go back to this tradition. You know, you, we all go kind of like in those directions, and then we, we need those hard times, those life-threatening times to finally react, to well, finally then see the light. But there is another way around that. Yes, and the reason is because we was trained in the opposite way. Because in the society that we was born, everybody had all those beliefs, and we learn what they teach us, and we believe them. And by believing them, we become like them. And let's see, when we talk about Toltec tradition, uh, the word Toltec means artist. It's in Nahuatl and means artist. Then it means artist in any of the language that we talked before, like it means artist in English, I don't know what is the meaning in Germany or in Japanese or in China, but it's exactly the same meaning. Then when we talk about uh, the, the, the Toltec tradition, we're talking about the artist tradition, and it's not just Mexico. It's all around the world. It's universal, and it's talking about the simple human being in this human society all around the world because there's artists all around. You can see the beauty of our creation in every single city. We give life to the cities and the cities are alive. They have their own personality, their own way of being, their own beliefs, etc. All the, the people dreaming in those, in those cities. It's just amazing to see how we give life to all those cities, which is let's see, like the temple of the humans who live in that city. Mm -hmm. Then uh, I can say that this it gives physical... It gives it a soul. It gives it a soul. Yes, and their own personality, their, their own way of being. And like I can tell you, okay, this physical body is the home of my mind. And my mind is the home of what I really am, even if I have no idea what I am. But I can say by using the words of knowledge that it's a force. It's the force that moves matter. Because if you remember physics, in physics they tell you that matter cannot be moved or stop the movement without the effect of a force. Well, we are that force. <laughs> it's life. I don't know what I am, but I'm alive. I'm here. Mm -hmm. And I'm moving this physical body by my own will. Mm -hmm. Then this physical body has a home in wherever I live. It's a home in the city that I live. It's a home in the country that I live. And it's a home in the entire planet. That the entire planet is really a temple. A temple where nature is always teaching me. Nature is really the real master as I becomes a master because I am the earth 
for me to be the entire humanity, I'm also the earth and all the components of the earth. And that's what made it possible to a shaman do whatever they do, to a priest do whatever they do, because it's just names anyway. Mm -hmm. And I'm not really neither a medical doctor, a surgeon, I'm not a shaman, I'm not none of that. I'm just a messenger. Mm -hmm. And we